Hello, my beautiful ducklings. Today I'm going to talk to you about guilt. Why do you feel guilty about getting your manifestation? I know that you guys are going to thank Susie seriously, but the majority of my clients, when I coach them, feel guilty about getting their manifestation. And a lot of times we don't realize that, you know, guilt plays a huge role in why we don't get our true desire. This is Susie, your beautiful swan queen. Welcome back to the garden. When you are manifesting something, and it can be anything, money, a car, specific person, better health, if you are in a bad relationship and you are wanting out, if you are trying to get a promotion at work, all of these multitudes of things. This time, you know, everybody's quarantined and only certain people can do things. And we're all sitting here thinking in our heads about our manifestation and we're working on them even harder and they're not showing up. It's because there's a block. And a lot of times that block is to an underlying guilt that you feel. So if you are manifesting a specific person, you have made a third party important. Why? Do you um, focus on this third person? You're giving them a cute name, 3P, and then you're constantly talking about them and how they're blocking your manifestation. What about them is making you feel guilty? What about them is making you go, you know, um, this person's blocking me because you're not projecting it out. You're trying to find an answer. So if you're in a relationship and it's not a good relationship and you have children, you want out of that relationship, but you know leaving may hurt the kids. You're guilty. You made a promise to a family member that you would do everything to keep this relationship together. It's not working. You feel guilty because you broke your word in trying to keep the relationship together if you leave. If you have a specific person in mind and they are living with somebody, they're married with somebody, they're dating somebody else, what is that person going to do, be or have when you get your manifestation? And you're gonna all tell me, oh, I don't really care what that person does, but that's not true, you do. You honestly do care about it. If you are a genuinely good human being with a very big heart, you care about that person and what is going to happen to them. You care if they're going to be able to pay their bills. You care if they're going to be able to keep their car. You don't want them to hurt just to get whatever it is you desire. Money. Here's a big one. Why do you feel guilty about having money? So the biggest one is if somebody were to pass away and leave you everything, you lost that person. If you get a promotion at work, what happened to the person who you just took their position? Where did they go? If they got fired, how do they support their families? How do they take care of their loved ones? Are they going to thrive and get a better job or are they going to spiral like we have when we came to manifesting it was because something wasn't working in our life what wasn't working in your life if it was a relationship it was because there was so much chaos if it is a finance it's because you're struggling to make ends meet if it is to get a new car Unless it is a brand spanking new car off of a dealer's lot, somebody else has to give up that car. There's always something that somebody has to give up in order for us to get our manifestation. And when you look at that, you go, oh, wait a second. So if I'm antique shopping, that means I got somebody's antique dresser. If I'm car shopping and I only have, say, $5,000 to spend for a car, 
I can't afford payments at this time in my life, and I want to make sure I pay for cash. So I'm taking that $5,000, and I know it's going to cost me place and insurance and tags or sales tax. And I am going, I have $5,000 to spend, so who's going to sell me a car for, say, $4,000? So then I have $1,000 to take care of all the expenses. Well, now somebody has to be willing to give up that car. So you buy it from a little old lady and she tells you, you know, Susie, this car was mine and my husband's and I just can't drive it anymore. And I don't know how I'm going to get to the grocery store. I'm going to have to depend on other people. You're buying this woman's car because you need it. But now they told you the reason they're selling it. And so much of our lives, we focus on the outer world and what's going on. We have to clean up our inner world, which is why everybody talks about mirror technique. And everybody is you pushed out. Because the stories that we tell, this person had to give up their car for me. This person died so I could be wealthy. This person had to get, you know, kicked out of their house so I could have it. This person had to break up with the, the love of their life so I could have the love of my life. And we start running this circle and this garment. And then we add titles. So now we have guilt and we've titled this person. So I can't have my specific person because I feel guilty that his wife is going to be destitute. Maybe she'll never find somebody else. And I'm coming up with, you know, simple reasons off the top of my head as to why. Well, now they have small children. So how are the children going to survive? Are the children going to be better off? You know, co-parenting isn't really that good because so many of us have seen chaos with co-parenting. It's a lot of work and we have to put the energy in it. And then we have to like this person that we're causing the breakup for. So somewhere, something is blocking you, and a lot of times it's a simple little thing called guilt. And when you don't know exactly what's blocking you, it's easy to deal with it. But if you are actually doing the work, and you come up and you go, you know, I really, really, truly love this person, but they have children, and I know he's not happy, and I'm keeping them in that relationship because of the children. And if I take them out of that relationship, then the children pay for the relationship breaking up. There's no winning and losing in that situation. So the tools teach you how to bypass your blocks and your guilt. The I don't know how is great for dealing with guilt because if you don't know exactly what you're feeling guilty for, you don't have to dig it up. If you don't know exactly what the block is, you don't have to dig it up. This could be my block. It's huge. It's a 30 ounce coffee cup. You know, my little Alabama Crimson Dye coffee cup. So I have a 30 ounce block between me and the, the camera. Well, I can pick it up and I can move it, but that's all it does. But to put it back here, in my past, I have to find a way to let it go, to release it. So now you guys can't even see it because my chair is blocking it. But that didn't make the situation go away. It just puts you at a stop, at a standstill. And that's where you feel you are in your manifestation. So how do I move forward? When even if I know what my block is and I feel guilty about my block, I actually get my manifestation. I don't know how. Isn't it wonderful? Is one that may work as well for some people. Because if you are letting go, it's truly letting go of the how. It's picking up my headset, setting it down, I let it go. I'm no longer paying attention to it. It's not my focal point. I'm thinking about, you know, something else that needs to be done today. But it's still here in my eyesight. It's still going to distract me at times. So when you need to distract yourself, 
because you have a block, especially if that block is guilt, you need to really truly rely on the tools and redirect your focus. And by redirecting your focus in a forward motion, you are owning it. I have a problem with breaking them up. I have a problem with inheriting. I have a problem with, you know, finding out that this poor little old lady now depends on somebody else to have this car. And we can go, you know what? Those things are going to step up to the plate. I don't know how that's going to step up to the plate. I don't know how the other person's going to thrive because we're focusing forward, but we're also praising the other person. We're raising them up. We can all say about a third party in a specific situation, I don't care about that person. That person just go fly a kite. But in reality, we do. As a human, we don't really want drama, even though we feed off of it. So that drama plays in our mind over and over again. And then you add guilt. And then you add learning how to manifest. And now we have this hamster wheel that we're spinning on and we don't know how to get off. So I always get my manifestations quickly and easily. But this. And I'm not getting this because deep down inside, I am blocking it from myself. And I most of the time know the reason. Sometimes you won't admit the reason. You'll say, oh, that's not true. But it is. What are you feeling guilty about that would cause you to get your manifestation? If you are rich, do you feel guilty that other people are giving you money? Do you feel guilty that only rich people are evil? Do you feel guilty that you know, you're overcharging? Do you feel guilty that maybe you don't have that degree hanging on the wall that says you're intelligent enough to have this? Guilt, fear, and block, it's all the same word. It's just the word you choose to use it. But out of a thousand people, I can tell you 90% of them felt guilty about something. And when they cleaned up their guilt, or they said, you know, I realize I feel guilty about breaking them up or inheriting or taking this from this person. But that was the story I created in the past. The new story I'm going to create is that they are better off because this person is with me. They're no longer in pain because they're now in a better place. You have to find reasons to turn it around. And we're not turning our manifestations around, we are actually sitting here going, you know, that coffee cup's out of sight back there. I can't see it, but I still know it's back there. And because it's still back there, I'm focusing behind me. Instead, we need to pick up the coffee cup, set it down in front of us and say, you know what? You explain to me what I need to do. You explain to me how I need to redirect my focus. I'm going to take my problem and create my solution because I'm going to ask, what is the solution to this problem? How do I get over this? How do I get around this or over it so that I am getting my desire? That's by knowing your true desire, using the tools to get around. I mean, that's all we do in manifesting. We are constantly a GPS, and we're focusing on a route, and if we have to go from point A to point B, and we take the same route every day, and all of a sudden there's a, an accident, and Surrey reroutes me to another place, I'm like, I can't go that way. But that way leads you to what you wanted, easily and effortlessly, but we're rejecting it. Our solutions are in front of us. But we are looking at it as a problem, and we can't solve a problem by looking at the problem. We have to ask ourselves questions. How do I get around this? What do I need to focus on? And if we need to focus on something, we can ask a question. You know, I don't know how to get around this problem, so somebody show me an answer. 
guide me in a direction, Minions, because you know I want this manifestation. And then Minion Dave's going to come up and he's going to go follow me. I'm going to go, oh, I'm not going in the coffee cup. I'm going to go around the coffee cup. And now I'm in front of the coffee cup because I'm showing you a different route. Don't get stuck in your problem. Find solutions by asking, what is the solution to this block? What is the solution to taking the next step forward? How do I create my reality keeps you in the middle, stuck? Why is it so easy to create my reality and blast through any situation so I get my desired end? I don't know how I got past this, but I did because now I have my desire. Focusing in a different direction is all we need to do to create a better life. It's easy, guys. You just have to ask the right questions. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Subscribe, smash the like button, share my videos, and as always, tell me why what I'm sharing with you is drastically changing your life for the better.